Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon this evening is that reading from the Gospel of Mark. Well, we've been working through our Lenten series on these Wednesday nights here asking the question, why did Jesus come? Two weeks ago on Ash Wednesday, we started it off and we learned that Jesus came to be our Lamb to take the sins of the whole world upon himself and to die, to take them all away. Last week, we heard about how Jesus came to heal us, not just of of physical ailments as we see him do in the Gospels, but more importantly, to heal us of our spiritual ailments, to cure us of our sin. And now, this week, the excitement jumps up a notch. We've got a fight on our hands here, folks, because we'll be focusing tonight on the fact that Jesus came to battle Satan. We know that Satan is the one who brought sin into the world. Back in the the Garden of Eden, he tempted Adam and Eve into sin. And now because sin has entered the world and corrupted humankind, there is a need for a savior. And God promised that Savior in Genesis 3.15 as God told Satan that the Savior would crush his head, but that Satan would bruise his heel. So right there in the first promise of the Savior, we see that there's already going to be this battle between Jesus and Satan. And so when Jesus enters our world, the battle is on from the start. So in one corner, we've got the great deceiver, That old serpent, the prince of this world, the father of lies, who's prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, Satan. And then in the other corner, we've got the Lamb of God, the Savior of the nations, the Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus. And so now that we've properly hyped up this battle, all that's left is to say, the immortal words of boxing ringside announcer Michael Buffer. Let's get ready to rumble! So pretty much from the first moment that Jesus begins his earthly ministry, he and Satan are locked in hand-to-hand combat. Immediately after his baptism, we see Jesus being led or driven out into the desert by the Holy Spirit. And who is waiting for him there but Satan? Satan is there to tempt him throughout those 40 days. And we know that Jesus wins that battle by using the word, that weapon that Satan has no defense for. Jesus repels him with the word. And we see the fight raging on as Jesus' ministry continues. As he goes from town to town, he encounters all kinds of people who are possessed by demons. And we know that these demons are Satan's army. They're his minions doing his bidding. But Jesus shows that he has power over these, even over this army of demons that Satan sends. And once again, Jesus uses the word to cast out the demons from the possessed people. So clearly we see Jesus and Satan battling each other. So clearly they're on different sides. That seems pretty obvious, right? Well, it's not obvious to everybody as we hear in our gospel reading here from from the gospel of Mark tonight. Some of the scribes that came down from Jerusalem had a very different idea. They thought that Jesus and Satan were on the same team. That's how That's how they say that Jesus was able to cast out the demons. It's only because he was using the power of Satan. Now, that's absurd. We know that. God and Satan, from the very beginning, have been on opposite sides, very, very conflicting interests. So Jesus and Satan are not working together. And Jesus replies to this with with his own rebuttal. He talks about, you know, if Satan is casting out demons, then his house is divided and he's coming to an end. But Jesus explains that that he is certainly not on Satan's team. He's not in league with Satan. Jesus has his own power to cast out demons. That's because he is full of the Holy Spirit. And he uses that power 
to cast out Satan's minions. Jesus shows clearly that Satan is not divided. He's not bringing an end upon himself, but instead, Satan is actually strong. Jesus uses this illustration of the strong man, and the strong man he's talking about is actually Satan. Satan is very strong compared to us. He's the ruler of this world, and and on our own, we are too weak and too feeble to stand up against him. We're too powerless, and, and really, on our own, we are slaves to sin. And because of that, we are really slaves to Satan. We are in his household because of this sin that we are in. He's the strong man, and we can't get out of his house on our own. We are bound. We're tied up. We can't get out. And so it's going to take someone even stronger than the strong man, Satan, to come and rescue us. Well, enter Jesus. Jesus is the one who is far, far stronger than Satan. He, he came to battle Satan. He came to be our champion in this war against Satan. He came to rescue us from our bondage to sin. And that's why Jesus ultimately goes to the cross to fight that epic battle against Satan, against death, against sin on our behalf. Now, when Jesus is on the cross, bleeding and dying, Satan thinks, He's got him right where he wants him. Satan thinks the victory is right there for the taking. But even in his weakness, even in his death, Jesus was winning the war for us. He was winning that final battle. He was paying the price for our sins once and for all and breaking that bondage that we are in to sin. And we know that when Jesus walked out of that tomb on Easter Sunday morning, he won the war. The war was over. Satan is defeated. Jesus did what he came to do. It is accomplished. In our text, Jesus explains that before you can rob the goods from the strong man's house, you've you've got to bind him. You've got to defeat him. That makes sense. And that's what Jesus does. First, you have to bind the strong man. We know that's Satan, and we know that his house is is filled with goods, and we are those goods. Because of our sin, we're in Satan's household. But Jesus came to battle Satan, and Jesus won. Jesus bound the strong man who had robbed us out of God's household in the first place. And really, when you think about it, Jesus is is kind of a robber himself. Really, he's kind of the ultimate robber. He robs Satan of his power. He robs us of all of our sin and our guilt, and he robs death of its sting. He robs Satan of his victory, and he gives the victory to us by his death and his resurrection. So we know that Jesus came to battle Satan. We know that he won that battle. We know that he won the war. It's over. The victory is won But there are still some more battles to be fought here on this side of the last day. And Satan knows that he's defeated. He knows his fate now, but he is going to try to win as many of these battles that are left as he can. He's going to try to take as many people with him. If he's going down, he's going to take as many as he can reach. He's still trying to wreak havoc with his remaining power here in this world. But we know that Jesus bound Satan. And so Satan is bound, but he's kind of like a dog. He's kind of like that mean dog in the neighborhood who's kind of vicious and, you know, maybe it's tied up to a stake in the front yard or maybe tied to a tree. You know, he can't really move around too much, but, you know, his zone of terror is kind of small, but, you know, if you get too close to him, he'll get you. I remember when I used to ride my bike through the neighborhood, I would see some of these you know, mean-looking dogs, and they'd have those vicious barks, and I would kind of give them a wide berth as I was riding my bike because I didn't want to find out if they're, you know, how their bite compared to that vicious bark. So I tried to steer clear. But sometimes, you know, in life, we, we still kind of ride our bikes a little too close to that dog. Sometimes we get a little too close to Satan. Even though he's tied up, he still has that zone of terror, and he's still tries to tempt us into sin. He still tries anything he can to try to shake 
our faith in Christ and to try to take us back out of God's household and try to get us back into his house again. We know that Jesus has won the war, but he doesn't just leave us now to fend for ourselves. Jesus equips us with what we need to fight the daily battles in our struggle against sin and against Satan. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against the schemes of the devil. We know that it's a war zone that we live in here as Satan is trying to get us here before the last day. So we need God's help, and and God gives us that help that we need. In our baptism, we are clothed with that full armor of God so that we can live the Christian life and fight back against Satan. We are clothed with all the things that we need. We've got the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness that Jesus has won for us. We have the shield of faith with which we can extinguish the fiery darts that Satan throws at us on a daily basis. We have the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that's that powerful weapon that we can use to cut Satan down to size. It's that same weapon that Jesus used himself to battle Satan, and and Jesus hands that to us to equip us to daily battle Satan ourselves. So today, as you leave, you'll be receiving a little piece of rope. Remember the first week we had the little cotton ball with the lamb sticker, and last week we had the the band-aid. And so this week it's this strip of cloth, or a strip of, of rope, excuse me, and you can put it in your plastic cross there as we're going week by week and collecting our little items. But this, this rope is there to remind you that you once were bound in Satan's household because of sin, but Jesus burst the cords. He, he broke us out. He robbed us out of Satan's household and rescued us. But the rope is also there to remind us that Satan is bound, that Jesus has won the victory. He has won the war for us. Satan is defeated once and for all. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ who came to battle Satan, who came to be our champion, who came to win us the victory, and who will lead us through this war zone of life and take us eventually to be with him for eternity in his household in heaven. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all of our human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.